trailer jack blocks. So I have received probably no less than 100 emails over the last year or so from people asking if I would review these Anderson trailer jack blocks. These are really cool, um, but you know, I'm just kind of a little leery about a plastic block holding up something that can weigh upwards of 20,000 pounds. But we're gonna take a look at these and kind of evaluate them and see how they perform. These were sent to me by Anderson for review and evaluation. I'm gonna give you my honest feedback on these as well as what my feelings are in terms of their construction, their design, and what they're capable of doing. So hang tight, I'll be right back. Before we go too much further, let's talk a little bit about what's in this box. This specific package comes with six of these trailer jack blocks. Why six? Because they are designed to attach to the bottom of a six point auto leveling system. You can get these two at a time, four at a time, or six at a time, I believe. But you're gonna wanna check with the folks over at andersonhitches.com to verify. Now Anderson makes several really great products. They make the Anderson no sway hitch, they make the ultimate fifth wheel connection hitch. They make a lot of really cool innovative products for stabilization. And this is actually a stabilization product, not so much a a block and a lift product if that makes sense. These are designed so when you're extending the landing gear or auto leveling system on your fifth wheel you aren't overextending the legs and it creates a much more stable platform. People that have these say that they work absolutely great. Okay so I've done a significant amount of research on these blocks before requesting them for evaluation. I don't just go out and jump on any product that's out there. I specifically want to make sure that it's not going to pose any type of danger to me or my family if we're going to use it. And my evaluations are really the second stage of an evaluation I do. The first one is all the behind the scenes research that I do on the product. I read just about every review I can. I go on the forums. I look up all the different reviews that people have put with their own experiences. I look for pictures. If I see one that's been damaged, if I see something that doesn't look like it's working right, I dive into that as well. And I did that for this product also. So my main goal here is to evaluate the construction of the actual block, because I know that's gonna worry some folks, right? Using a plastic block underneath a steel landing gear foot or pad, even though the chassis and body of your fifth wheel is not gonna be much higher, the fact is this block being as high off the ground as it is, if one were to fail, it would be a pretty far drop for your landing gear. So it's not just a, a small little two inch drop, it's a sizable drop. And I wanna show you what this looks like but more importantly, I wanna see for myself how they've constructed this product to give me peace of mind knowing that if we're using this underneath either the Van Lee Beacon or our new fifth wheel, we're not gonna to have to worry about it potentially failing. So let's get these unboxed, unpacked, and put out on the counter so we can get a closer look at them. From the outside, they look very robust. They definitely don't look like they're made out of thin or flimsy plastic. They actually look more like a urethane design. They have two magnets on the top of each one that allow it to magnetically attach to the bottom of each landing pad, which is really nice. That way you don't have to worry about trying to align them perfectly underneath the pad whenever lowering. You simply attach them to the pad and then drop your landing gear. The lip, this entire area feels very robust. This framework on the inside would be nice, I think, if it was extended out or thicker, but apparently this is thick enough and this is all about quarter inch thick. So I'm not too concerned about these things failing from a structural defect because they feel very, very robust. They're very heavy for what they are and they probably weigh more than they would if they were aluminum. That's how heavy they are. So I don't think you have to worry about these actually cracking or breaking unless you set this down with like a rock under one edge of it, right? You don't want to put these down on any type of really hard, sharp platform or corner or any area that could cause a stress fracture or some type of a crack simply because it's not distributing the weight properly. This lip down at the bottom is designed to be as thick as it is on both sides simply because it's designed to distribute the load. So you want this to distribute that load as best possible. That's why I would also imagine that these are gonna work best with your standard fifth wheel style round pad where it can actually distribute as much of the load to the entire surface as possible. If you put something smaller on here like a square pad, you could probably take the risk of applying pressure in an area where it's not specifically designed or excessively cause wear in that area. 
With this, I would definitely recommend spreading out the weight across the entire pad. And in all of these pictures, except for its much, much lighter application, you see that they are round pads that are going on top. On these lighter trailers where you're going to have, you know, only around a thousand pounds max, you could probably get away with using a square or a rectangular or a smaller pad overall. But with something like a large fifth wheel, I really wouldn't put these under the pad if it's not a round pad that fits into this perfectly. That being said, they look like they're manufactured very well. I have to honestly tell you, they have a lot of heft to them. They are a very, very heavy item, again, for what they are. The plastic is incredibly thick. It does not feel lightweight or cheap. So if you pick these up, the first thing you're going to notice is you're not going to get that cheap, flimsy plastic feel. I don't think there's any way this plastic could flex very much under even the 6,000-pound load if you were maxing these out. But, you know... For me, I will never load one of these up to that type of weight. At most, I think the heaviest fifth wheel that we would ever put on this thing might distribute about 1,750 pounds to each one, which is significantly less than the 6,000 pound maximum rating that these have. So again, as long as you're careful with how you install these on your RV, I don't think you're going to have any problem at all. But you do want to be very careful. So. On this gravel parking area, the block is actually sitting perfectly flat. But what you don't want to do is have it sit like that on a rock. That could possibly compromise the integrity of the plastic, causing it to crack. And quite frankly, whether it was aluminum or not, it would probably still do the same thing. You're never going to want to put anything that's going to have that type of weight-bearing load on it on something that's not even and spread out and uniformly spreading out the weight across a larger surface area. So, from a fitment perspective, if we take this block and we try to get a hand underneath it, we simply attach it. Are the magnets strong enough? Oh yeah, they're plenty strong. They absolutely hold it up there without any issue at all. You can see it's completely off the ground, and the actual landing gear foot pad sits almost perfect inside of the rim here. Very nice. And there's a little hole and a dip inside of the plastic to allow water to drain, just so water doesn't build up on here as well. But that is really cool. And once we place all of these underneath the fifth wheel, all it's going to do is keep these legs from having to extend very far. Because if you think about it, this leg, as it sits, is about a foot off the ground which means that whenever it's extended, you have this metal post that's gonna push down about a foot off the ground. And that's where a lot of people say they get some interior motion and movement because of that arm extending so far. When you're using something like this, as you can see, it'll only end up extending about two inches off the ground, thus giving you a significant improvement in terms of stability because you have this much larger footprint with a much smaller amount of travel with the actual arm extending on the level up or the ground control landing gear. This is very cool. Whenever we take the fifth wheel out on our next trip, I plan on putting these on to see specifically how they work. And they can also decrease the amount of time it takes for your leveling system to level out your unit. Where these can also help, and these can be a huge benefit, is if you are in a site that is really, really unlevel and you would normally have you know, some of your landing gear extend really far, some of your landing gear not extend very far. You might have some of them that would normally max out, and this is gonna give you the ability to allow your landing gear not to work nearly as hard to get your fifth wheel or toy hauler level. So these are really cool. I will be doing a much better evaluation whenever we take the RV out next time, so you guys get a better interpretation of how this is gonna work in the field in an actual camping environment. Okay, so you may be wondering why I'm not actually demonstrating these things working right now. And the fact is I just don't have a fifth wheel hitch in the back of my truck at the moment. I took it out while I was getting my tailgate fixed and I haven't had a chance to reinstall it. Um, so I don't have the ability to hitch up at this moment. However, I plan on demonstrating these when we take the camper out on our next trip. So hang tight. Now's a great time to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.